one in the conference and seventh ranked in the country. And after falling behind 13 nothing, put a whale of a scare into Cabrini before finally falling by 11, a game they had within six with a couple minutes to go. Today, it doesn't get any easy, easier. On their home floor, they're playing Keystone, 17 and two record overall. Only one conference win, a loss, and that was to Cabrini. These two teams met up in northeastern Pennsylvania in La Plume, which is where Keystone is located about a month ago. And it was a 78 to 60 win for Keystone. So it's um, it's a tough challenge, but uh, you previewed it. This is a big, big game for Rosemont going for a playoff spot. And um, it's, uh, it's going to be difficult, but a win here today would be so, so important. And not beyond the reach of the Ravens. And Rosemont coming off two-game losing streak, lost pivotal games against Newman and Marywood, and Keystone actually on a 13-game winning streak. So Rosemont's only home loss was to Cabrini, and Keystone's only conference loss was to Cabrini, only by three points. So definitely a pivotal matchup today. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for everyone's attention here. Today uh, is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Day at Rosemont College. It's also World Cancer Free Day that's being celebrated all over the uh, United States. Um, ovarian cancer is close to my heart. Four and a half years ago, my wife was diagnosed at age 31 with ovarian cancer. We're, uh, we're, we're now we're listening to a, an address by a women's assistant coach, uh, Brenda McCarthy, on Cancer Awareness Day. And, uh, we were able to I wish we could type it into you. It's, it's a very touching tribute. And we'll capsule it in just a minute when Mr. McCarthy is done. Lucky. addressing the crowd. Uh, it's called the silent killer of ovarian cancer because the symptoms, which is on this card that's out at the door, you can, you can pick up this, this really common symptoms that get misdiagnosed until it's too late. The, the Sandy Rahman ovarian cancer really helped my wife and I, and they're the, the uh, sponsors here. They, um, the, the woman, Sandy Rahman, was age 34 when she passed away. The, the one doctor told her she was crazy, that there's nothing wrong with her, and here she has stage four cancer. So this one is a silent uh, killer. Look at the symptoms. Uh, the statistics are one in three females will uh, get cancer. It's actually worse for, for males. That's a higher statistic. So I know it's a, it's a women's disease or ovarian cancer, but everyone here, both teams, I thank you, Rosemont and Keystone for your support, but they all have mothers and sisters and aunts um, that could be affected by this. So um, again, thank you for your support. There's, there's uh, pamphlets outside. There's their nation bucket and so forth, but uh, good luck to both teams here. Thank you. And special message, uh, Ovarian hey, Cancer Rosemont Month. Both teams, actually, Rosemont wearing teal on their shoelaces to commemorate. Actually, both teams actually wearing teal shoelaces to commemorate Ovarian Cancer Month. So just a, a moment just to take pause for that uh, cause. Uh, let's just go to the lineup. Circle. Let's just hit, talk about the Keystone. I mean, they have five players in double figures. And, and their lead, you know, their standout star is Kenneth Hartnett. He's a two-time, three-time player of the week in the conference. Last three weeks, he's been conference player of the week. And, and he's just an all-around uh, conference uh, all-star. Right. He's a, a senior. 18.2 points per game. He is their leading scorer among their five who are in double figures. 11.6 rebounds per game. He's clearly their leader. A forward, six foot five. And just this, of course, is the third year that Rosemont has had men on campus, has had a men's basketball team, and they have yet to crack the Keystone Jinx. Uh, losing the first five games. They've played them twice each season, have lost the first five. The closest game was in that first year, 65-59 loss. And significantly, this season they have met uh, one month ago. 78-60 was the winning score for Keystone. So 0-5 is Rosemont over time. And what a day it would be to get that first win. As you said, uh, Travis, we have, frankly, we got five teams right now playing for four playoff spots in the Centennial Conference. And, um, but they're not only playing, the first and second, Cabrini and Keystone, they're going to end up first and second. There's nothing anybody can do about that. And then three through six are going to play in a play-in game, and three and four are going to get home 
court advantage. So Rosemont's not only playing to get in to the tournament, but they'd love to have a home court, which would be about two weeks from now. And Centenary College and Immaculata play today. There's also another conference game. So this is pivotal, a pivotal game for, for their aspirations to get into their first uh, playoff berth. Just go through the starting lineups for Keystone. We have guard Mike Kelly, Jr. Freshman, guard Dan Candamares. Freshman, six foot, Miles Dargan. Malcolm Boone and Kenneth Hartnett. And starting five for Rosemont, Justin Cheney, Kevin Fenstermaker, Tramel Green, Harrison Carcillo, and DeAndre Jordan. Rosemont start on a man-to-man -man defense. Ball swung out to Hartnett. Back inside the Boone. He turns around. Off Carcillo with the rebound. So it appears to be going to be a really physical game. Rosemont has been consistent with moving the ball around, getting consistent looks at the basket. Nice down pass inside the paint to Carcillo that from was Green. a blind pass to Carcillo, bounce pass. He cut again hard from the left side. A great way to start. Come to being guarded by Cheney. Bounce pass, blocked by Fenstermaker. Hurstenecker with the block on that. And crowd into the game early so far. Carcillo drives to his right, off the glass, off. Rebound by Hartnett. Tenth by Candamaris. It's off. Rebound by Cheney. So Rosemont's been able to force them to take outside shots, even though they had a couple of great looks inside. Key to this game is really going to be for Rosemont to slow the pace of this game down because they have five players who can score double figures. That's to make a shot. Okay, first off. Necker, they obviously left him wide open on a three pointer. They're almost inviting that shot, I would think. Drive by Boone. This will be the first foul of the day. It will be on first and Necker. He uh, Boone had got partially by him first and Necker. And if we track every game, you can that first sequence or two down the floor, you'll see Fenster make it take that three pointer. About fifty percent I think for the year, but that first shot within those sequence he'll take that three. Rebound by Carcillo. And now first and Necker taking the ball. Andre top. Jordan on the wing. Carcillo, great ball movement by Rosemont. Drive inside by Carcillo with the, or Cheney rather with the floater and he hits the two. 4 0, 18 minutes remaining. Jordan goes for the steal, he misses. What happened there? Uh, the ball went off the rim, way up in the air, hit the wire. Hit the wire above the basket. That's out of play. So the remain Rosemont ball. Inbounds pass to Jordan. He swings it. Ball intercepted by Kelly. Over to Kendamaris. He misses. Rebound by Jordan. Three on two opportunity. Almost a travel there by Jordan. Over to Cheney. He takes the jumper and it falls. 6 0. Lead by Rosemont. 17 40 remaining. Good start from Rosemont. Good start. That That'll will be, be the foul. second foul. That'll be on fence to maker. Uh, Fenster maker will have to come out of the game. Second foul in only two and a half minutes. Steve Thompson at the table checking in. Dargan converts the first one. Miles Dargan, a 69% free throw shooter. So early on, Rosemont with a five point lead. Five point lead. No field goals yet for Keystone. They are true to form. They don't waste much of that 30 second clock and you can't waste much if you're averaging 90 points a game. Full court press. Heavy Jordan full court trying press. trying to get the ball stolen by Dargan. Over to Hartnett for the two. Slams it down. That's almost a five-man full-court press, or four-man anyway. They go right back to it if they need that. Keystone in a full press. Roseman having some difficulty getting it in. Gets it in the hands of Cheney. He'll be guarded by Dargan. Over to Green. Being guarded by Kelly. Swing pass to Carcillo. Takes two pumps, drives to his left. Takes the turnaround.
and rebounded by Hartnett. Marcelo very effectively operated that baseline then and then used his body to actually get the man off him, went up to the 12 foot jumper, but no good. He is, of course, the leading scorer for Rosemont. Time to Murray's down to Boone. He goes in for the layup, misses. We're gonna have a loose ball foul. I believe it'll be on Tramel Green. Boone is listed as six foot six, but he just seems bigger out there to me, Travis. Um, a real force underneath. Already two rebounds in the ball game. So 6-4 Rosemont lead, 16-47 in the first half. Inbounds pass to Kelly. And we'll have Thompson's first foul. Actually, Carcillo, that's going to be on Harrison Carcillo, his first. That foul is called on Carcillo. At the line for Keystone, Mike Kelly shoots two. Kelly, one of the five double point scores, 13.6 per game. He's a junior guard, six foot three out of New Hartford, New York. 78% free throw shooter. Tie game. The second is good. So we're 6-6 six, six here, 16-43. Keystone here, full court press. Pivotal game here in the CSAC conference for Rosemont. Looking for firm placing for the playoffs. Playoff missed by Green. He gets his rebound and places it back up. He comes down the floor gingerly. Ball right back down to Keystone. Three-point shot by Kelly. Goes off. Rebounded by Thompson. That shot went off with 29 seconds on the clock after a made basket. So Keystone pushes it up, and boy, they shoot quickly. But it's missed. And Keystone is extremely fast. Once that ball comes up the rebound, they're looking to push the ball up the floor. A nice blend of inside game and outside. They, they, they've taken a lot of three-pointers on the shot. They have a good three-point shooting percentage. Rosemont inbound underneath. Break the press, two on one. Rebound by Green. And it's funny how you mentioned the three-pointers. They're actually top in the nation, top 20 in terms of three-pointers made. So With what percentage, can you tell? Well, Okay, that's three pointers made. That pretty they much actually right. average nine a game. So that's 17th in the country in Division Three. And this is a team with a lot of inside strength too. Pass down the green. And we'll have a loose ball foul on Dargan. Green has started out very actively. Missed a layup or two, but he's got going right back up for the ball. That'll be a non-shooting foul. So bounce pass. To Green, being worked on by Boone. He steals it. Ball stolen by Garcilla back to Green. He's inside the paint, takes the easy two. Great effort there by Garcilla to force the steal. So Kondamari's back to lead Keystone's offense, being defended by Cheney. Pass to Dargan, his shot's off. Rebound by Thompson. Touchdown pass to Jordan, in for the two. And Rosemont being aggressive here in this first couple sequences down the floor. Well, he looked up quickly and he threw a bullet length of the floor. Jordan for the easy two. And Kelly drives inside. Great drive, crossover. Crossover girl at the top Kelly. loses man. Thompson, That'll be Thompson's first foul. Thompson. Maybe he should have had his first on the last sequence, but gets his first official one now. What's that again? Uh, Thompson probably should have had a foul in that last sequence, a couple yep. trips down, but Fisher gets his first. Foul. The three-point play is completed. So it's 12-9, 15-15 in the first half. Rosemont up by three. Priscilla being defended by Kelly. Man to man all the way by both teams so far. Pass to the corner, almost deflected out of bounds by Dargan, but in the hands of Cheney. He dribbles to his left. Shot clock rolling to 10. Green tries to cross over to his left. And Jordan with the rebound misses. A great attempt there by Jordan, but into the hands of Dargan. Over to Kelly, in for two. Mike Kelly 
Hawaii from Target. Not sure what that stoppage was about. So Keystone down by one, 12-11. And Rosemont is going to use the opportunity here to make a substitution. And Green will go to the bench with four points. Derek Carter, Derek Carter the substitute in. in for Green. Uh, Carter actually round. averages nine points a game, so a little more production. Pass down to Thompson, no good. He gets his own rebound back up for two. Ball quickly swung back out. Keystone being extremely quick with getting that rebound back down to the other end of the floor. Ball in the hands of Kelly. Pass down to Dargan for two. No, actually Boone for two. So Keith's down. Keystone's now down by one, 14-13. Rosemont pushing the ball at every chance they get too. Top the key. Foul. By Kanda Marys on Justin Cheney for a four-point opportunity. A rare four-point opportunity, but he was clearly fouled as he was uh, into his follow through. So that'll give Rosemont a four point lead, 17-13. 13 40 remaining. That's only the second team foul on Keystone, over six minutes into the first half. And Rosemont shooting well from the floor thus far, 50%. That goes down, so 18-13, five-point lead for Rosemont. And Cheney will come out, replaced by Dan Kearney. It's his first low of the game. You would think that the substitutes will be frequent with the pace of this game. So Kendall Mary dribbles to his left, being worked on by Jordan. Pass over to Boone. His shot's off. Rebound by Jordan, quick outlet to Carcillo and the dunk. And that's just a great transition game there by Rosemont. It really was. That's the second breakaway. Off Ken the Marys over to Kelly. Uh, hurry, it's off. Free. And a reach in foul by Kelly. That would be his first foul. It may have almost been a smart, uh, a smart foul. Jordan was uh, in the process of moving past him. He had Carcillo out on the left wing. Foul number three. Team fouls, we've got five on Rosemont and three on Keystone. 20 to 13. Carcillo over to Jordan. Being guarded by Condamari. Dan Kearney in the game. Carter over to Carcillo. Rosemont being patient. And then the hands of Green. Top of the key to Jordan. He takes the three. It rattles out. Nevertheless, a good offensive set. Worked the ball very patiently, got a wide open three, just didn't fall. Boone over to Kelly. Down the heart net. He misses, gets his rebound, and gets the two back in. So timeout here by Keystone. Quite acrobatic. Hartnett went up, the Rosemont defender went flying over him as he was in the crouch position. Missed the first shot, but hit the follow. We have a 20-second timeout called by Keystone. Uh, the first timeout of the game. Just to set, we are at 12.34 remaining in the first half. A really good start for the Ravens. 20-15 to 15 lead. Uh, and head coach Nevada Smith in his first season with Keystone. So, while well, Coach Tozer's in his third, so. Looking at the stats, Rosemont at 50%, nine for 18. Uh, Keystone way under its average, 5 of 17, 29%. And I have seen a couple of hurry three-pointers along jump shots. They seem to have been better when they're trying to move the ball inside. Keystone is. Cheney over to Carter. Carter for the three. That goes off. Ball knocked out by Carcillo to Cheney. Gets it down the green. And he hits it right on the right underneath the basket. Jim Carcillo for great work on the offensive boards there to push that ball out to Cheney to start the play all over again. So Rosemont with a seven-point lead, 22-15, 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Drive down by Condamaris. He's good. Takes it to his left. So 
Shaney brings the ball off. Kendamiris with the steal. In the boon, one. over to Hartnett. Two points for Keystone. Yeah, sloppy turnover there on Rosemont, but um, uh, more pivotal. Uh, Carcillo looks like he was struggling a bit, and he's limping a little bit as he comes up the uh, floor. He wears a brace on that left ankle. And um, that'll be a loose ball foul on Kandamari. So a second foul on Kandamiris. Mitch Carcillo coming in for his brother, Dan. Dan limps slightly to the sideline. Hopefully he'll be back for the Rosemont. A very, very key person to their offense and defense and rebounding. And typical substitution for Rosemont. Mitch often is substituted in for Harrison. Bounce pass to Carter, blocked by Boone. Tim Bendix. Pass to White Knight, back to Bendix. He drives inside. His attempt's no good. Rebound by Carcillo to Green. And the alley oop to Carter. Exciting well play executed there. executed alley oop. Rosemont is back. That ball went up with 30 seconds left on this clock. You can't turn your back on Keystone after a basket. And quick answer by Kelly. So both teams seem to be content to get that rebound and run. Carter, ball blocked by Boone. Boone to Bendix. Back to White Knight. Screen takes a spin move. Rebound by Carcillo. Into the hands of and Carter. Carter was looking to pass the ball. He saw the defender uh, ready to intercept. He ended up fumbling the ball and traveling. So 24-21 here, three. Yeah, turnover number five for Rosemont. Only one so far for Keystone. White Knight being guarded by Cheney. Bendix to White Knight. Enthusiastic crowds here to our left in the Rosemont end zone. Throws the ball out of bounds. Looking for Hartnett. Turnover number two, 24-21. A pretty noisy alumni hall. And a very good start for Rosemont against this nationally ranked Keystone team. And Hartnett thus far six points, three or four from the field. A quiet six points, I think. But a quiet six points is uh, nevertheless six points, and he's a very dangerous player. Might kill the leading scorer for Keystone. Jordan. On the weave. Over to Carcillo, drives inside to his left. Ball rolls off the rim. Uh, hung on the rim, just didn't fall. Rebound by Boone. Pass down the heart net, in for the easy two. So Keystone within one again, 24-23, 9-23 remaining in the first half. Looks a whole lot better when they're trying to force underneath. They have not been shooting well from outside, but um, uh, they're strong in both aspects of the game. What's working for them so far is the inside game. Cheney drives to his left, Paul steps, kicks it back to Carter, over to Green, who misses everything there. Outlet to Hartnett. Back to White Knight. Turnover by Keystone into the hands of Carcillo, and we'll have a loose ball foul here. That's Chief White Knight with the foul. So Keystone has hit no three-pointers thus far. They're 0 for 6, uncharacteristic for them when they average 9 a game. Yeah, I would say 3 or 4 of them were wide open, but 2 or 3 were with a face, a hand in the face, and uh, uh, maybe one or two of those was pretty ill-advised. So Jordan <laughs> over to Harrison. Mitch Carcillo, rather. Dan Kearney. Swing pass to Thompson, and he travels. Had the ball in the lane, tried to tried to pivot, didn't pick, and uh, picked up that pivot foot. So in a couple sequences here, Rosemont's has been a little overexcited, had a break opportunity with a travel. 
Yeah, Thompson was down in the paint and he traveled. Yeah, so ball back in the hands of Keystone. 24 now for about three or four possessions. Turn Stone over here by Carcillo, Mitch. Yeah. We'll have a foul by Hartnett. Foul on the Giants, number 23, Kenneth Hartnett. His first personal. 16 fouls now on Keystone, and they've picked up four or five just in the past two minutes. Rosemont, five team fouls. So Keystone yet to have the lead, 24-23. They're down by one. Approaching eight minutes in the first half. Green kicks it out to Carcillo, takes a deep three, and he hits it. And I've we've had games where Carcillo's hit five for five in the first half and hits his first three of the game. That's big. They've been stuck on 24. Now they got a four-point lead. Second three-pointer of the day, two for five. Alex Smith in for Keystone. Bendix, and we'll have a foul. Loose ball foul by Dan Kearney. Yeah, when you have both hands out, and they were up high on the body, they weren't hip, they were up on the shoulders. You're not going to get away with that. So Harrison Carcillo back into the game for Tremel Green. We will be shooting after this foul. We will be shooting 1-1 one -one the rest of the way in this half. Both teams with 16 fouls. Smith will inbound it to Boone. Gets the ball back. Smith over the heart net. Pass down into the paint to Duncan Lunsford, and he'll be fouled. That's on Mitch Car uh, Carcillo. Now on number four, Mitch Carcillo. His first personal. His first. The this will bring Kawan Murray to the scorer's table, waiting to check in. Lunsford, a 69% free throw shooter. So 27-23, oh, okay. four this minutes of one point lead here by he Rosemont. Had, he had not yet left his feet, so it's a one and one and His first free throw will go in. Duncan Lunsford, six foot four, forward, Marietta, Georgia, a freshman. We're seeing an even distribution of scoring here. Seven players for Keystone scored. Right. I believe and eight for Rosemont. And when you look at the uh, roster so far, there's a lot of playing time. Rosemont's either used nine or ten players. Keystone generally goes with a nine-man rotation. I think they've all been in. So Harrison Carcillo into the game. Mitch on the bench. DeAndre Jordan running the offense, being defended by Lunsford. Makes Lunsford... Step to his left. Ball kicked out to Jordan for the three, and it goes. Outstanding. And we're seeing great ball movement. movement by Rosemont. That's an offensive fail. Rosemont defense was back quickly. True to form, Keystone tried to push the ball as fast as they could. And what is key there is a the foul on Hartnett. Nope. That's not Hartford, that's Lunsford. That, okay, there's an argument well, there's been on a the stoppage floor. In play. A very legitimate. Okay, the foul has been corrected. It is on. So that will be on Hartnett. Hartnett, he was, uh, it was quite obviously the ball handler barreled over the Rosemont defender. And that is really key, because that is... Well, the scoreboard has one foul. I, I don't know if that's right. We'll have to know. Two fouls. Two fouls on Hartnett. So Jordan being gunned by White Knight. 30-25, 6.57 remaining in the first half. Carcillo swings it to Thompson. He'll take a three, and it goes. That's four three-pointers for Rosemont. And, and Rosemont should be 40%, actually 50% from the three-point line, 48% from the field, so they're just having a, a great shooting day. Three-point rattles out from Mike Kelly. And, and on the other side, Keystone just not shooting those threes. But every one of those Rosemont threes has been set off. Usually the uh, penetration and the pass back. And a drive down in the lane by Car Carcillo. So Rosemont playing a really efficient game and, and just not a great shooting day thus far for Keystone. 33-25 with six minutes Third, remaining. Eight-point lead. Biggest lead of the day. Defensive chance throughout the stadium. 
Ball on the court in the Bendix, and he hits a three. First three to game First for three of the game. Boy, they need that. 33, 28. <laughs> Left baseline. Kawan Murray kicks it over to top of the key. Harrison Carcillo. Cooney gets it to Thompson. He spins, gets into the paint. Shot clock. A little above 15, and another three here by Rosemont. Jordan. There's a quick And an answer boy. back. So Bendix with two threes, Rosemont with four threes in the game. So are we looking at a shootout here? Yes, we are. That was a quick three. I thought it was hand in the face, well defended, but it was all net. And Keystone is, when that ball comes off after those scored points, is immediately getting the ball across the, the midpoint of the court. And, they, and really, Rosemont needs to stop that if they're looking to slow this game down. Spin move by Carcillo. He stopped at the foul line. Thompson drives. Wild shot. Ball in hands to Lunford, and the ball blocked by Jordan. And we'll have a foul here. So this, both teams seem content now to run the floor on made opportunities and rebounds. Jordan with the block at one end, and then he's fouled, bringing the ball across the midcourt. He's going to go to the line to shoot one and one. Rosemont, only their second time to the line in the game. They're one for one. 38 to 31. 450 to go. First half. Jordan is less than a 50% three throw shooter. 48% hits the first one. Hits the first one. You didn't put the chinks on him, Travis. <laughs> I think he's going to push through any sort of jinx I may throw on him by throwing out his number, but I think he hits his second. Hits so. Them both. He's coming out. He's actually, um, he's actually uh, bleeding. The uh, right arm. Kearney back into the game for Jordan. So 11 point Rosemont lead, 40 31, 448 remaining in the first half. The nine point lead is the biggest. Mike Kelly over to Malcolm Boone. He spins down to the paint. His shot goes off. He gets his own rebound. He misses. Rebound by Carcillo. Rosemont looking to run, but slows it down. And Rosemont really matching the pace of Keystone throughout this first half. Carter down to the paint. He spins, and it rattles in for another two. They are, but Rosemont is showing more patience on offense. They really are working that ball nicely. That was an inside basket following the couple of threes. A wild three-pointer. By Bendix. Ball out to... Carter for the dunk. And Rosemont simply matching the energy. This is multiple opportunities where Rosemont's gotten that ball out immediately in transition. Keystone coach was calling for travel. I'm not so sure he's wrong before he went up for the dunk. Kelly drives for the easy two, catches Carter, flat-footed. He admits to the error. 44-33, 3.37 remaining in the first half. Pivotal conference game here for Rosemont. Keystone, only one loss in the conference. We'll be playing Cabrini in a few games. Running the weave. But Rosemont matching the, the energy here and the pace of Keystone. Looking to take their time on this possession. Thompson top of the key, 4-3. And that goes off, rebound by Kelly. Kelly out to Bendix, back to Kelly. Block there, the pass blocked by Carter. Back to Thompson. Three point attempt by Kearney, goes down. And Keystone here takes that timeout. They, they just simply aren't keeping. Right, that's the second, second timeout they've used. I'm surprised it took so long, 47 to 33. Once again, Kearney got the ball in the corner. Thompson was spinning through the lane. There was nothing there for him. He flipped to Kearney, wide open three, took his time, set his feet, and nailed it. Rosemont, five for nine from three-point land, but they've been good three-point shooters. They Shots, they have not taken a bad three-point shot yet. Keystone, three for ten. They've 
Both taking about the same number, but a couple of those have been forced. They've been fast. And a hand in the face. 47 to 33. At this and leading scorer in the game, DeAndre Jordan with 10 points. Only player on the floor with double figures. It's evenly distributed scoring for both teams. Justin Chaney had an early eight points. So for Rosemont, it, it's definitely been the key that they've had been doing, keeping the pace with, with Keystone. Rosemont is winning the rebound battle, 18 to 14. Both teams hitting the board card. And, and frankly, uh, when a defensive rebound is obtained on either team, they're looking for that break opportunity. Rosemont's had two or three total breakaways, and they've been good enough in their defense to get back and not give Keystone anything terribly easy when Keystone is in fast break transition. And several opportunities where Rosemont have wide open layups or dunks because they've been looking up the floor after that rebound. So Greg Restry in the game for Keystone. He takes a three and it goes down. Well run offense that time by Keystone. Green being worked on by Kendra Maris. 225, 47-36. Ball inside the green. His shot goes off the front of the rim. Westry drives down to the paint, kicks it out to Kendra Maris. He drives in. His opportunity is off. But we're going to have a loose ball foul by Derek Carter. Yeah, Broom went in for the dunk, uh, and he was hit on the wrist as he went up or as he was in uh, receiving the ball, putting it back in, so it's a, it's a two-shot foul. Michael Boone hits his first three throw, 74% shooter. Rosemont is three for three on the foul line. Keystone, seven for seven. Make that eight for eight. Make that nine for nine. 47-38, a little over two minutes in the first half. Keystone now sitting back, not pressing. White Knight, Fenton and Carcillo gets it over to Carter, who gets it to Kearney, down to Tremel Green, and he's fouled by Boone. Yeah, great play by Kearney. He looked at that three-point shot. That Defender was coming out quick. He moved around him into the lane. Good, the Giants, number 22, Malcolm Boone. Good bounce pass. First personal, number nine on the team. The green, the he's fouled going up. Green. Shoots two. Green's first trip to the line this afternoon. That's his first, first shot. Uh, free throw in the game. Rosemont three for four. Keystone nine for nine. Green a 62% shooter on the year. This second attempt is off rebound by Boone. Gets it to Westry. Back to Boone at the top of the key. Pass to Lunsford. Blocked by Carcillo. Lunsford goes up again. And fouled by Carcillo. Great defense there, though, effort was, by Carcillo. He, he blocked the first one. But um, Down the basket by Duncan Lunsford. Lunsford got the ball back, took it up, and this time, uh, after a good pump fake, uh, Carcillo hit him hard. Lunsford shoots one. Two fouls on Carcillo. That's key. That'll bring him off the floor. So that 14 point lead has dropped to six rather quickly. We got 138 remaining in the first half. A very entertaining first half. And the story here is that Keystone is on pace to score over 90 points, but Rosemont is well above their season average. Already at 47 points. Only average is about 69 a game. Pass down to Cook Murray. Kicks it back out to Green. Patience, showing patience. Carter over to Kearney, and his pass intended for Murray goes out of bounds. He thought Kearney was dropping further down on the block, and he was coming out further. So a little miscommunication there causes that turnover. 
So West Street will bring the ball over midcourt for Keystone. 113, 47, 41 deficit. Ball blocked by Derek Carter. A sensational block by Carter on that. Inbounds pass to Bendix. Over to Westry, being defended by Carter. He takes the three, it goes off. Rebound by Murray. Justin He's Chaney just going under a minute here, Travis. 47-41. Rosemont needs to go into that locker room with that lead. Chaney being worked on by Lunsford. Gets it to Green at the foul line. He takes one dribble and hits the floater. Beautiful fake to the right as if he was going to pass. Then he went up with the four-footer easily deposited. Nine, eight-point lead. Ball intercepted by Murray. 25 seconds and a half. He drives in down to Carter for the easy two. And Rosemont now with 51 points on pace for 100. Keystone averaged over 90. I mean, can Rosemont actually get over 90 points and stay with Keystone here? 10 seconds to go. Keystone is going to go for that last shot. Ball to Boom. Out front to Broom. He's tied up. Rosemont intercepts at the buzzer. A 10 point Rosemont lead, 51 to 41 at the half against a team that has lost only one game in conference, two games all season, nationally ranked, maybe Rosemont's best half of basketball of the year. Now the key question, can they keep it going? They the seem half? like they can. I mean, they're shooting 60% from the three point line, 54% from the field, they're playing defense, they're helping, they're getting transition points. All the things we saw earlier part of the season, when because this team is eight and one at home, so they definitely play harder at home and they're backing it up with hard play and protecting the basketball. And I like what I've seen so far in the first half. Okay, so uh, Travis has set us up for the second half. It should be a thrilling half time. If you're on campus or in the area, stop on over here. This is one well of a basketball game. And we'll be back. And we'll take a 15 minute break. In about 12 minutes. <laughs> 